Well, here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter, the candlelight preacher tonight. I probably won't ever do this again, but seeing that we're in this situation, we're going to use it to our advantage. And we're going to learn from it, and we're going to see how it felt, perhaps, to those old-timers that all oh, had to, uh, those that wrote the Bible in the first place, walking from place to place by a lantern or whatever, and then those folks that took this King James Version and they were in a building and they didn't have anything but candles and lamps. And that was it. And I'm suspecting that the, the big old building they were in was not very light during the day. And they had to use lamps and candles even during the day to uh, do the ciphering they did, read the parchments they were reading and translate them into the Bible that you and I have today. Uh, we feel like we, we don't we don't think about we don't we, you want to know the honest the truth we don't really think properly we don't look back at the day that this came from we don't look back to the day this Bible came from it came from damp cold dungeons Paul wrote it in damp cold dungeons with chains on him. In places with chains on him, he wrote several epistles from the prison house. Do you think it was comfortable there? You have another thought coming. I just visited over there for one week back in 73, and what little bit of arthritis I had, it flared up bad. It wasn't a comfortable place for me. Uh, not in the rock buildings and the rocks and everything. And it's, to me, it was not night. Even in the summertime, it was cold around the rocks to me. And so uh, I could see Paul. I went in that little old dungeon. I went in that dungeon that goes down, 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 down. It starts at the top and it goes down. Why does it go down? Because those guys hanging in chains up there... Uh, this is not very polite, but human waste has got to go downhill somewhere or it'll pile up under your feet. And they had no way to get out of those chains to go change anything, so that place stunk. That place was not clean. That place was not light. It was dark and stinking. And then every now and then they had to go down there with some kind of buckets or something and clean the thing out. And, and it wasn't pleasant. I never heard Paul complain. I never heard him try to stay out of going to jail. As a matter of fact, I heard him ask them that he wanted to go see uh, the king and he wouldn't be able to see him for two years and he was going to be in chains for two years. And he asked for that. Why do you think he asked for that? Because he knew that he could have candlelight at night. After he got there and he got to talking with the guards and talking with the people and he won them to the Lord, they let him have a candle. They'd bring him a piece of parchment. They'd bring him a quill and some ink. They'd bring him what God knew that he had to have. They, they brought it to him and gave it to him. But first thing he had to do is prove himself, and he won those people to the Lord and their families and others along the way. And he won people to the Lord that could be scribes. He could talk and they could scribe. <laughs> how would you like to be for two years, how would you like to be for two years, every six hours, chained to another guard? Six hours on, six hours off. Six hours, guard was on six hours. And they divided the day up and just, well, how many watches ever that was. Six hours apiece and they changed guard, changed guard, changed guard. I love the fact what Paul knew. He knew that if he did that, that he could win every one of them guards to the Lord. And those guards would be 
from different sects of people. Do you remember that, that, that there were 70 different dialects there during the day when the uh, Holy Spirit came, the day of Pentecost? And did, did you know that when the people got to Crete, Paul's traveling, he gets over to Crete, and he finds churches in Crete. What was Crete? Crete was a mile, 150 miles long, 35 miles wide, and it had a mountain and a valley, a mountain and a valley, a mountain and a valley. It had 150 cities in Crete, or towns in Crete. And when they got over to Crete, nobody had been sent over there to preach yet. But there was churches over there. How did they get there? Where did they come from? Well, those Cretans were there. The Parthenians, the Cretans, the Parthenians, the Laodiceans, all of those people were there. The Ephesians, all of them were there from Ephesus, from Pontius Galatia. And it lists a whole list of where people were from. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit and they asked Jesus to forgive them of their sins, save their soul. And when they went home, they didn't bury it in the ground. They passed it on. That they were, they got saved. And so they started works at home. They passed on what they had. So can you see them like right here, what I have right here, I got the fireplace burning. Can you see them sitting around the fireplace? And most of them didn't have a piece of parchment in that day. Because they didn't have the Bible. The Bible was being written in that day. All they had was the sermon they heard. They heard Peter preach and they heard the other disciples preach. The Bible said all the disciples mingled among the men and preached the word. Those 120 people came out of that upper room and mingled with a crowd of thousands of people. There were thousands of people there paying their uh, yearly dues that they had to come pay. They had to come pay their taxes there. All over the known area, anything that belonged to Rome, they had to come there and pay the taxes. So there was somebody there, a representative from every place around the world. You, you think that it was a coincidence that God had all of those people there and had the Holy Spirit come at that particular moment in life? It wasn't a coincidence. God's a God of order. He knows what he's doing. He, he's got all the order in the world. He's got it all ordered. Now he, he knows what human beings need. He knows where the human beings would be. He sent the human beings there. You say, but Peter, they were there to pay taxes. No, they were there because God had them come there not to pay the taxes, but to hear the word. So God could give them life. Did you know that, that, that those apostles came out with excitation? They didn't neglect the gift that they had to pass it on. They passed it on uh, by the laying on of hands and by what was called the presbytery. They all of a sudden became the presbytery instantly. When the Holy Spirit gets in you, you become part of what is the presbytery. That's the people that pass the word on. And they became part of it. And they, they continued in that doctrine steadily after that. And passed it on to people. They spoke. The Spirit gave them the ability to speak expressly what what Jesus wanted to, to him to, Jesus wanted the people to hear first Timothy 4 13 and and 16 we see this they talked about faith they talked about don't give heed to doctrines of bad spirits or doctrines of devils he said I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing and his kingdom 
Preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap up to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Do you know that's where we are in the United States of America today? We have thousands of works that call themselves churches today that have turned unto fables. I did a study, I think it was, I don't remember if it was yesterday or early this morning or whenever, of the, the papal church of the falsehoods that's in some churches that have nothing to do with what God's saying. They have something to do with a system that collects a lot of money and lies to their people. The head of those churches lie to their people. They don't tell them the truth. They get them believing wise fables and endless genealogies that aren't true. And they're going to die and go to hell. You say, you mean a guy in one of those churches, a guy who's been in church all his life, can die and go to hell? He sure can. If he's not in church preaching the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he's preaching a false gospel. The true doctrine of the word will help us that we henceforth be no more children, that we don't be tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine that comes down the pipe. By the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Those young Christians in Ephesians, in Ephesus, knew that. They were young Christians. Uh, but they knew, hey, uh, it was like, for instance, somebody that was going to come and beat you out of one of your sheep. They knew the false people. They knew them. Doctrine is what's going to acquaint us with the details of God's eternal plan. We've got to start, in a big sense of the word, with the history of Israel. If you knew the history of Israel and because of their disobedience where they walked for several hundred years and the, the problems that came on them for several hundred years were because God gave them a circumspectly way to walk and they didn't walk that way. And because they didn't walk that way, they, they suffered. Now we see concerning the moreover said brethren I would not have you to be ignorant how that our fathers were under a cloud do you know that Jesus was a cloud over those people while they were in the hot desert during the day and a pillar of fire at night and he was a pillar of fire at night to keep them warm I tell you if you're in 140 degrees during the day and then you're in 40 degrees at night. That's like freezing. 100 degrees different. And, and you could freeze to death. You'd feel like you were. So he said, I would not have you ignorant, brothers. And don't be blameless. Be blameless about not knowing, but be blameless to know. Blame the fullness of... In Romans 11.25, concerning spiritual gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant. Okay. Concerning the rapture, but I would not have you be ignorant. Don't try to get up yet. Wait on me. And uh, I'll be right there. And I'm going to cut this short, folks. I've got uh, my, my wife over here is uh, not doing too well and I've got to attend the business. Alright. 
So doctrine helps to edify God if you get the right doctrine. So we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.